our last contribution, Miriam Cates. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I think you're the third chair uh, in this debate now. Uh, it's an honour to follow uh, my honourable friend, the member from Newbury. I agree with absolutely everything she said, and I will make some, some similar comments. It's been a long but incredibly fascinating debate. We've only uh, spoken about a small proportion of the bill today, just a few amendments that uh, have been brought. Um, but the, the wide range of the debate it, uh, reflects the enormous complexity of what this bill is seeking to do, which is to regulate the online world so that it has equivalent rules and regulations, obligations and protections as the offline world. And we must do this because the internet is now an essential part of our infrastructure. And I think we see our high-speed broadband cost in the same category as our energy and our water. We just couldn't live uh, without it. And that's why, like all essential infrastructure, we must regulate the internet, make sure that providers are working in the best interests of consumers within the law uh, and with democratic accountability. Regulating uh, the internet, the online safety bill, is not a one-off project. And as many members have said, it's going to take years uh, to get this right, but we have to begin now. Uh, and I think we can compare this to the regulation of, of roads. You know, over a century ago, there were hardly any private motor cars on the road. There were no rules. You didn't even have to drive on a particular side of the road. And road regulation has taken over 100 years uh, of, of frequent changes of rules and regulations to get right. And it seems crazy now to think that there were a time when there were no speed limits or no seat belts. We just can't imagine. Uh, the, the death rates on the roads, even in the 1940s, were 13 times uh, what they are now. But over time, with regulation, we have more or less solved the complex problems uh, of road re re regulation. And similarly, it's going to take time to get this online safety bill right. But we must get it onto the statute book and give it time to evolve. But the really crucial thing, and this brings me on to um, the amendment New Clause 28, is that we must look at the internet through a child's eyes. So I thoroughly support the sentiment of New Clause 28, which, as my honourable friend said, calls for the establishment of an advocacy body to represent child users of the internet. Now, the in internet has many impacts on adults. Some are good. I love Google Maps. I'll never get lost again. Some are bad. But for children, it has utterly transformed childhood. Some would say the internet has destroyed childhood. Childhood is an absolutely crucial and irreplaceable time. And before the internet, parents and schools and communities had full control over who influenced their children. You didn't let people into your home unless you trusted them, unless you knew that they had the best interests of your child welfare at heart. Now, the people that are influencing our children in their bedrooms, often malevolently, is just off the scale. It's hard to comprehend the impact that the internet has had on the influences over children in childhood, and many of those do not have their best interests of heart. And we've heard many, many tragic stories uh, today about how children have been harmed uh, through direct access of other people into their lives over mobile phones. But I think one of the overriding results of the internet, as my honourable friend has said, is to sexualise children in a truly destructive way. And as my honourable friend said, around 50% of 12-year-olds have now seen online pornography. 1.4 million UK children every month access porn. And there's nothing mainstream about this pornography. It's not the dodgy magazines of old. Violence, degrading behaviour, abuse, uh, addictive behaviour are all mainstream in pornography sites now. Would my right hon. Friend agree with me that the work of uh, charities like Dignify in my constituency of Watford with Helen Roberts, who does incredible work around raising awareness of this, is absolutely essential in making sure people are, are aware of the harm that can be done? Yes, I completely agree, and other charities like Cease and Bernardo's have all contributed uh, to this debate, and I think it's so important to raise awareness. Yes, there are many harms of the internet, but actually uh, the epidemic of pornography, porn makes up a third of the internet, uh, just can't be overstated in the impact uh, that it's having on children. And uh, many, many boys who watch uh, porn says it gives them ideas about the kind of sex they want to try. So, of course, it's not surprising now that a third of child sexual abuse is committed by other children. And during puberty, during that really important time of development, people have this, uh, boys particularly, this erotic imprint, the kind of sex that they see, the kind of sexual ideas that they have during that time, um, determine what they see as normal behaviour for the rest of their lives. So it's absolutely crucial that children are protected from harmful pornography, which encourages the objectification and abuse, almost always, of women. I certainly will. Um, I think on this point, uh, my honourable friend, for giving way, um, uh, the lawsuits are coming. Uh, uh, and there can be certainly no more harmful 
uh, an act than encouraging a young person to mutilate their body with so-called gender-affirming surgery without any in, uh, therapeutic intervention before that happens. And, uh, and the, in Scotland, uh, the uh, UN Special Rapporteur for Violence Against Women and Girls has criticised the Gender Reform rec uh, um, Recognition Bill by the Scottish Government. Does she agree with me that it is time to establish who is a feminist and who is a fake to the fingertips? I, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention, and he is absolutely right. Inciting a child to harm their body, whatever that harm is, should be criminalised, and I completely support the sentiment of New Clause 16, which would seek um, to do that. And, you know, sadly, the case is that lots of children go online, girls particularly, they type in, I don't like my body, maybe they're drawn to eating disorder sites, as the Honourable Member for Chelmsford has spoken about, but often they're drawn into these sites that glorify transition. Often adult men in other countries that they don't even know posting pictures of, of double mastectomies on teenage girls. Sorry, can I, can I you certainly can. I mean, this is... The, the Honourable Lady must realise this is fantasy land. It's incredibly difficult to get gender reassignment surgery. And the kind of... They're just confused stuff is exactly what they said to me as a young gay, gay man. And it's... It, you must... The Honourable Lady must realise... This really simplifies a complicated issue and patronises people going through difficult choices. Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his uh, intervention, and I really wish it was fantasy land. But I'm in contact with parents each and every day who tell me the stories of their children who have been drawn into this. And yes, in this country, it is thankfully very difficult to get a double mastectomy when you're under 18, but it's incredibly easy to buy testosterone illegally online, to inject it, um, egged on by adults in other countries, and um, once a girl has injected testosterone during puberty, she will have a deep voice for life, facial hair for life, male pattern baldness, and be infertile. That is a permanent change. That is self-harm. That should be criminalised under this bill, whether that's with this clause or, or the new plans that the government has. But the honourable gentleman is absolutely right. Uh, it is happening every day, um, and it should be classed as self-harm. But going back to my comments about. Um, pornography and uh, how the effect of children, on children of viewing uh, pornography. Um, you know, I absolutely support the idea of putting children's experience at the heart of this bill, but it needs to be children's welfare and not what children want. And I think one of the impacts of the internet has to be to blur the boundaries between adult and adults and children. And as adults, we need to be, set, be able to say, this is the evidence for what is harmful to children. This is what children shouldn't be seeing. Of course, children will want to say they, they want free access to all content, like they want unlimited sweets and unlimited chocolate. But as adults, we need to be able to say what is harmful uh, for children and to protect them uh, from seeing this. Now, this brings me on to the, the next uh, amendment that I want to speak in support of, which is the Government New Clause 11, which is about... Um, making sure that child sexual abuse material uh, is taken offline. And there's a clear link between uh, the epidemic of pornography and the ep epidemic of child sexual abuse material, because the way that the algorithms on these porn sites work, uh, and, and other members have spoken about this in different areas of the internet, is to draw users deeper and deeper into more and more extreme content. So someone might go on to what they think is mainstream pornography and be drawn into more and more explicit, more and more extreme, more and more violent, more and more criminal pornography. And at the end of this all, normal people are being uh, drawn into watching children being abused, often in real time, often in other countries. So there's a clear link between the epidemic of porn uh, and child sexual abuse material that, that is so prevalent online. And last week in the Home Affairs Select Committee, we had Professor Alexis Jay, who led uh, the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse. And the report is harrowing, and it's been written over seven years, I believe. But sadly, their reflection was that at the end of this report, seven years later, there are now even more opportunities for people to abuse children because of the internet. So making sure that providers have a duty to remove any child sexual abuse material that they find is absolutely crucial. And many members have referred to the Internet Watch Foundation, and I think just one incredibly terrifying statistic. In 2021, the IWF removed 252,194 web pages containing child sexual abuse material, an unknown number of images. So new clause 11 is really important uh, to put the onus on the tech platforms to remove they, those images when they are found. And I think it is right to put the onus on the tech companies. And all the way through the writing of this bill, all the different uh, consultation meetings we've all been to, we've all heard the tech companies say it's too hard, 
It's not possible. Privacy, data, security, cost, etc. I'm sure that's what the mine owners said in the 19th century when they were told by the government, government to stop sending children down the mines. It's not good enough. These are the richest, most powerful companies in the world. They're more powerful than an awful lot of countries, and they have no democratic accountability. If they can employ real-time facial recognition at an airport, they can find a way to, uh, to remove child abuse images from the internet. And this leads me on to new clause 17, which would introduce individual director li liability for non-compliance in the name of the Right Honourable Lady for Barking. I completely support the sentiment of that, and I agree that it is likely that this is the only way we're going to inject some urgency into the process of compliance. Why shouldn't directors who are profiting from the platforms be responsible if children suffer harm as a result of using their products? It's certainly the case in many, many other industries, and she used the example of the building trade. Of course there will always be accidents, but if individual directors face the prospect of personal liability, they will act to address the systemic issues, the problems in the processes, the malevolent algorithms that deliberately draw users uh, towards well, harm. My honourable friend knows I, I too am taking a great interest in this, and I'm glad to say that the uh, government has agreed to, to continue discussions on this question. Uh, is she aware that the personal criminal liability for directors flows from the corporate criminal liability of a company of which they're a director and that their link to the criminal act itself, even if the company has not been or is not being, being uh, prosecuted, means that the matter has to be made clear in the legislation so we don't have any uncertainty about the relationship between a company director and the company of which he is a director? Um, I wasn't aware of that. I am now, and I thank very much my right honourable friend for that information. And I think that's, it's a really crucial point that we need the accountability of the named director uh, associated with the company, with the platform, with the product, to introduce the accountability uh, that's necessary. Now, I don't know whether the Minister is going to accept this amendment today, but I very much hope that we will look further at this, perhaps in another place, at how we can make it possible. And finally, so I do support uh, this bill very much. We need to get it on the statute book, uh, although it will probably need some further work. Uh, and I support the government uh, amendments. But I think Given the link between uh, children viewing pornography and child sexual abuse, when this bill goes th through the other place, I do hope that their lordships will consider how regulations around pornographic content can be strengthened uh, to drastically reduce the number of children that are viewing porn uh, and therefore being drawn eventually into criminal activities themselves. And I think particularly I would like their lordships to look at tightening and accelerating the age verification and giving equal treatment to all pornography, whether it's in <laughs> porn sites, user-to-user -user services, whether it's online, offline. Porn is harmful to children in whatever form it comes, and so the liability on directors and the criminality must be exactly the same. So I support this bill, uh, I support the uh, amendments in the government's name, but it needs to go further when it goes through the other yeah. place. Minister.